Thank you for having me. I want to talk about um, two things that we think a lot about in our everyday lives. One is money, and one is happiness. Uh, and um, we spend a lot of our time trying to get more and more of them. We think about them all the time. We wonder, are we happier than other people? Do we have more money than other people? And also, we think about the relationship between um, the, the two uh, as well. So you'll often hear this phrase, um, it's a very irritating phrase. It's in religions, it's in self-help books. Many of you have a friend who'll say it to you from time to time. Usually it's a friend who does a lot of yoga. <laughs> and usually it's a friend who's actually very wealthy, which makes it even more irritating. <laughs> they say money, as they fly around in their private jet, money can't buy happiness, they say. And I want to suggest actually that uh, it's wrong. That in fact money can buy happiness. It's just the way we usually use our money is bad for our happiness, and there are better ways to use it for your money than the way we usually do. And so what we say is, in fact, if you think money can't buy happiness, you're just not spending it right. And I'm going to tell you at least one way that you can spend your money differently to get more happiness out of the money that you spend. But before I tell you that, let's think about the ways we usually spend our money to figure out why maybe it's not making us that much happier. So we had this funny uh, experience happen where a uh, story on CNN uh, which covered some of our research on money and happiness, interviewed these lottery winners. Uh, this is one of them here, uh, a $5 million check. Amazing, it would change your life. Imagine if you are who you are now, but you had also $5 million. Surely it would be amazing, you'd be happy, it'd be the greatest thing ever. It turns out this story is actually about how winning the lottery makes people unhappy. That it, for many people who win the lottery, it ruins their life. That's why there's a question mark. Does it guarantee happiness? Not an interesting story, the answer is no. It doesn't guarantee happiness. For one thing, you win five million, but you spend 10 million. The other thing that happens is you start to look like a dollar sign to everyone who's ever known you. So everyone, your friends, your family, your parents come up to you and say, hey, can I have a couple thousand dollars, things like that. It ruins your life for many people when they win the lottery. Remember, the story is about how winning the lottery ruins your life. Here's what's interesting. What happened was in the comments section, you should never read the comments on the internet because they'll drive you insane, but I happened to read some of the comments on this one. People instantly wrote, the article is about how winning the lottery is bad. They instantly started writing how amazing it would be if they won the lottery. Let me show you what a couple of people wrote. Uh, this first person wrote, when I win, I'm going to buy my own little mountain and have a little house on top. That is his ultimate dream of life, is to be alone on the top of a mountain in a tiny house. Here's the person who's even more amazing. Uh, I would fill a big bathtub with money that's not a typo, and get in the tub <laughs> while smoking a big fat cigar and sipping a glass of champagne. Already pretty creepy. <laughs> Creepier, then I'd have a picture taken and dozens of eight by 10 glossies made. Anyone begging for money or trying to extort from me would receive a copy of the picture and nothing else. <laughs> Horrible. Again, ultimate dream of life is to be alone in a tub of money, taunting people with pictures. But both of these examples, alone on a, on a house in a mountain, alone in a tub with money, taunting people, they're actually pretty, they're extreme, but they're pretty emblematic. So what people usually do, me, you, everybody, with money is we buy stuff and we buy it for ourselves. That's mainly what we think about when we have money, and especially when we win lots of money. We think, what can I get for myself? And it turns out that if you look at the research, some of ours and other people's, it doesn't make you very happy to buy stuff for yourself. It doesn't make you unhappy, really. It just doesn't do anything for your happiness. And we thought, well, is there a way we can get people to shift the way they spend their money, to get them to get more happiness out of their money? And we thought maybe one of the most radical ways is if everything we do is pointed toward ourselves and spending on ourselves, what if instead we ask people to spend it on somebody else, just completely shift the direction of the spending and see if we could get people to be happier? So we did this in a, in a very first experiment that we ever ran. We said, let's do it. Let's give people money, and let's see if we can get them to be happier if they spend it on other people instead of on themselves. The way that we do this is uh, uh, we went out on a campus at University of British Columbia one morning with a box filled with envelopes. We asked people, will you be in our experiment? If they said yes, we said, how happy are you, and some other questions, and then we gave them an envelope. And some people's envelope had a slip of paper that said, by 5 p.m. today, spend this money on a bill, an expense, or a gift for yourself. Other people, a slip of paper that said, by 5 p.m. today, spend it on a charitable donation or a gift for another person. They go on their way. We did something else, though. We gave them cash. When I give this talk in America, Americans start to laugh because they think that's monopoly money. Uh, that's Canadian money, if you've never seen it. I'm sorry if there's Canadians here. It's a real country to the north of the United States. 
Uh, it's not a funny experiment where it's fake money. So we gave these people real money. We gave some people $5, we gave some people $20. So here's the question, what makes you happier? Spending more money, $20 versus five, or does it matter instead what you spend it on, yourself or somebody else? So what do people buy? Uh, they buy all sorts of um, ridiculous things. These are mainly college students, so for themselves they buy stuff as usual. They buy earrings and makeups. Many of them are female, apparently. For other people, really, really different expenditures. One person said she bought a stuffed animal for her nephew. Uh, another person said that they gave money to a homeless person, street performers, taking somebody to lunch. We also see, probably because these are undergraduates, although I think it would be true for this crowd as well, we give people money and they run to Starbucks. <laughs> like a $5 bill looks like a cup of coffee and everyone runs and gets, gets a cup of coffee. The only difference here is that some people run and get a coffee for themselves. Other people run and get a coffee and give it away to somebody else. So who's happier? It turns out the amount of money makes no difference at all. So you might think $20 is better than five, and it is, it's more, but at the end of the day, when we call people up and say, what'd you do and how happy are you? $20 is no better than five, because it's not really that different. But what matters a lot is if you spent it on somebody else or spent it on yourself. You spend it on yourself, nothing happens. You're not less happy because you had a coffee that day, but it did nothing for you because you always have coffee. Why would it make you any happier? If you spend it on somebody else and get them a coffee, you're happier at the end of the day. Then we said, okay, this is Canada, it's a wealthy country. What about other countries? Imagine a very poor country. Would it still be the case where when people are struggling to make their basic needs meet, could you still, in fact, get happier still from giving it away instead of spending it on yourself? We went to Uganda. Uh, this is 10,000 Ugandan children, which is about the same purchasing power, and we did the exact same experiment. We give some people money to spend on themselves, some people money to spend on other people, and we ask them what they did, and, and we, then we see how happy they are. We see some amazing similarities between, uh, between the two countries. Uh, these are some reports of what people did with the money. This is a guy uh, from Uganda. He's, uh, I think, 18 or 19 years old. He says, uh, I called a girl I wish to love. I think that he means romantically, but it's a little unclear. Uh, we went to a restaurant, and I bought her dinner, uh, which was about $20. Uh, but I did not achieve this girl up to now. I think, again, he means romantically. <laughs> But it's ambiguous. Um, Uganda, country so different from Canada, you know, income, religion, every other way, but similarities, uh, amazing. This is a guy from Canada. I took my girlfriend out for dinner at a local restaurant for her birthday. We went to a movie, which was so bad we left halfway through, and then went back to her room for her. cake, just cake. So he also did not achieve the girl. Um, <laughs> Uh, up to now. But we also see amazing differences between the countries, as you can imagine. So here is uh, uh, someone from Canada. Basically, she goes to the mall, probably drives the SUV to the mall, eats in the food court, buys a scarf for her mom, uh, drives home in the SUV. It's clearly uh, spending on somebody else instead of yourself. We should all buy presents for our mom. But compare and contrast that to this example from Uganda. This is a woman who says, um, I was walking and met a friend whose son had malaria. They had no money, they have no home, and they needed to go to a clinic. And they used the same amount of money as the scarf to literally save somebody's life. And you could think, wow, that's an incredibly different pro-social behavior than just buying somebody a scarf, and it is. But it turns out, in fact, that the amount of happiness you get doesn't vary that much. So just as five versus $20 doesn't matter, it, what matters is spending it on someone else instead of yourself. Whether you spend it on uh, a scarf or life-saving, what seems to matter most is, again, that you're being generous for making you happy and not exactly how you're being generous when you do this. So that, two countries, uh, Canada and Uganda. Then we said, let's look at more countries. So we go to uh, a, a poll conducted by Gallup. They ask everyone in almost every country in the world, so thousands and thousands of people, how happy are you right now on a ladder? Zero, not happy at all. Ten, as happy as I've ever been. Where are you on the ladder? And they also ask them, did you give money to charity in the last month? So now we can see in all of these countries, are people who give to charity happier uh, or not? And what I'll show you is a map where if a country is green, it means people who give are happier people. And if a country is red, it means people who give are less happy. And we were astonished to see really that the world is amazingly green. Almost every country that we look at that there's data for, giving makes you happier. You probably see one country in the middle. Anybody know what country that is? <laughs> It's in the center of Africa, and it's a republic. Center of the Republic. That is correct. Those were good hints. So you could imagine, well, that's a very poor country. No wonder it's negative. Just below and to the right is Rwanda. 
incredibly green. So when we do these surveys again, we see almost everywhere, there's little blips, but almost everywhere in the world we look, giving is associated with being a happier person. Level of the individual, lots of evidence for happiness. What about at the level of groups? So we decided to switch and think about not just how happy does it make me to spend on somebody else, but what does it do to the relationship between us when we do that? So if I spend on myself, the money goes to me and it's gone. If I spend on somebody else, maybe something changes in our relationship and that could have other factors. Or maybe in an organization, if we all spend on each other, imagine what could happen to our performance as a team as opposed to when we just give people bonuses as usual for themselves. We've done a bunch of studies like this, one that we did with pharmaceutical sales reps in Belgium. Same sort of experiment. Some members of sales teams get money to spend on themselves that week. We gave them 15 euro. They go and spend it. Other teams, people get money, 15 euro, little amounts of money, but they have to spend it on somebody else that week, on their team. The reason there's a pinata there is not just random. It's because one, we asked them, what'd you do with the money? And one person wrote in huge letters on the survey, pinata, exclamation. Grown men, they were all men on the team. One of them went and bought a pinata, and one morning they strung it up and smashed it, and they all got the candy and things like that. They could have got a pinata any day, but they only did it when we gave them a little cash and encouraged them to be pro-social and be nice to each other. It turns out that the teams that uh, we gave money to spend on each other actually do better than the teams that we gave uh, money to spend only on themselves. And I'll show you some numbers on that. So remember, it was a 15 euro bonus. When we give teams 15 euro to spend on themselves, the firm gets only four and a half back. Why? Because their behavior doesn't change at all. So it's just throwing money away. It doesn't change their behavior. When we give uh, 15 euro to spend on each other, the firm gets 78 back. A five times investment on that sort of thing. And the reason is because people sell more stuff. They share more information among themselves. There's a little more mentoring that goes on on the teams. It changes the dynamic, and then it changes the performance of the team. You're probably thinking, OK, but this is fine. You know, we see it all over the world, and we see it with companies and salespeople. But what we really need to see to really be convinced that spending on other people can make you happy is dodgeball teams. Is that wrong? Yeah, no, uh, dodgeball teams. So we did the exact same thing with dodgeball teams again. So imagine you're on a do so anyone know what dodgeball is? It's the dumbest game ever invented by humans. Let me explain it quickly. I have a ball, and I throw it at you, and you dodge the ball. If I hit you, you're out. That's it. We did the exact same thing. So some of these members of teams in a dodgeball league, we gave them money for themselves. Other members of teams, we gave them money to spend on teammates. Teams that got money for themselves, they won half their games before. They won half their games after. No change at all in their performance. Teams that we gave money to spend on each other, they go from winning half their games to winning 80% of their games after the intervention. The greatest dodgeball team in the history of the world. I don't know if, how you'd even measure that, but let's imagine we could. Amazing dodgeball team. Why? One of the reasons is that actually, if you ever play uh, intramural sports, it's very hard to get people to show up. Nobody wants to come. It's raining out. I don't feel like walking. It turns out that teams that spent on each other, you say, oh, you know what? I don't feel like going, but Dave did that nice thing for me. I'm going to go this week. And part of the reason they do better is because they don't forfeit as much. So across all of these things, from people to organizations to sports teams, we again see this benefit of spending on other people instead of on yourself. And so again, if you think money can't buy happiness, you really just aren't spending it right. There are many, many ways to think about shifting what you usually do and getting more happiness out of every dollar that you spend. And so in the end, try to think instead about if you think money can't buy happiness, just try giving some away. Thanks. So um, Mike just also ran uh, the same experiment that was done on the sales team on my MBA students with the same uh, basic results. They were in teams and they got better grades and they enjoyed spending uh, more time with each other and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I, do, I do have a question for you, which is that in, those, in, in all, all of those experiments, people give us a one time and it's very salient. And I think that if we kind of try to encourage people to give time after time, it might not work as well. What about automatic deductions? What about if something, you have an automatic thing that every month I'm going to give something to charity, would these effects continue and how might you actually I increase them so it's not uh, out of sight, out of mind? Yeah, so it's a great question. So, so in ours, we're always making people really think a lot about what they're going to do with the money. You know, what am I going to buy for Steve this week with the money I gave him? And that in and of itself is a pretty interesting process. And maybe Steve smiles when we're done. Maybe that's why we get happy. What about kind of more passive giving where it just comes out of your paycheck every month? It turns out that people who do deductions out of their paycheck are happier people. 
And we're doing some studies now to try to figure out exactly how to make you get the most happiness out of that. And one way is to remind you every month that it's happening. So if it's really, really passive and it just goes, you don't get that boost every single month. The other way you can do it is there are some new investment funds where you can set aside money at the beginning of every year to give to charity. And you feel amazing when you do that. And then every month, I give you 1 12th of that, and you have to decide that month where to spend it. So it's almost like you're giving the same money twice to charity, and each time you're giving yourself credit for doing it. But from our perspective, that's fine, because not only are you getting happier, but the money is still going to charities the way you want them to. Very good. And last question. Um, can you describe a little bit how you're trying to make this uh, into also getting people to be happier with paying taxes? This is sort of the holy grail of this kind of research. So there's a funny thing about taxes. Uh, many people all over the world hate taxes, but Americans really hate taxes. In fact, the word uh, makes them feel pain, literally in some sense, when they just hear the word tax. It sounds so awful. And we said, well, imagine that we reframe taxes. And instead of thinking about them as something that's being stolen from you, you think about them as something you are giving to others. So one of the problems with taxes in general is that we don't see where they're going. They go into some fund, and we think about, I don't know what they're buying, so I don't, I don't feel like I'm getting anything out of it. And I don't feel like anyone else that I care about is getting thing, anything out of it as well. So we encourage people, actually, when they pay their taxes, to try to think. We we'll literally prompt them to think about who could this benefit. And then you think, oh, well, it's going to benefit all kinds of people. Kids will benefit from it. There'll be better environment for other people. And it turns out that when they pay taxes then, they, do get, they don't get incredibly happy. We can't get them up that high. But people do get a little bit happier with paying their taxes when we have them think about it as giving instead of as taking. Very good. Great. Thank Thanks, you. Dan.